Thank you, Luca. Um, we, we were going to have a question and answer, and that was a lot of information everybody um, had. Um, I would just say, and, and Luca mentioned it a bit, I think that uh, many of you are from brands, uh, many brands, I just looked at the list, um, uh, on the design and production side. And I think, uh, you know, I think sustainability is one thing, I think the reputational risk is the other. Uh, and it, you know, within your production, uh, within your production cycles or your, your supply chain and so on, I think uh, pulling it together just, uh, you know, think about it if you mess it up as, uh, you know, as Montclair uh, almost did or, you know, it wasn't, it was a production problem, not a sustainability issue with Lululemon a few years ago and their see-through pants. I mean, anything like that hurts you, it hurts the reputation of your brand and, uh, and now that the, the firms are really, all these firms are looking to be more, uh, uh, you know, more transparent, uh, it really helps your brand. And how you weave it into the messaging is, I think, the most difficult, uh, but at the end of the day, likely going to be the most important. So uh, if anybody has a quick question right now, we'll take it. Otherwise, there's a lot of good food, and Italian food and wine over there, I am told. So uh, does anybody have a question? Jeffers, uh, I'm the owner and founder of Jay Butler. It's a shoe company. We don't produce in Italy. I'm sorry. We produce in Mexico, um, which gets me to part of my next point. Um, with our president's announcement that there may be a 20% tariff on goods coming from Mexico, that is Trump, um, one thing that wasn't addressed in, in any of your presentations is the political climate, uh, both internationally, the growing rise of nationalism and populism, and how that could affect sustainability, in, uh, whether it's workers' rights, um, environmental protections, and anything like that. Well, <laughs> get right to the kids. <laughs> no, no. Um, <clears throat> the political. Sorry. It's the political climate um, with with the new U.S. leadership and the potential regulations on tariffs. How will that affect uh, you know how everybody how how things may proceed uh, regarding sustainability and so on? If that was okay. Well, I have a synthetic answer and a long one. The synthetic answer is, I don't know. <laughs> and the long one is, uh, of course, the political situation is evolving worldwide. Um, I told you that we have developed, uh, before starting, we, we have developed a risk management model for the textile and clothing industry in Europe. Uh, and this model is based exactly on the factors that you've seen, being country one of them. So the political situation is changing, the risk profiles of different countries is changing the technical and non-technical, uh, sorry, the tariff and non-tariff barriers uh, for the international trade of products. It is something that cannot be foreseen uh, uh, frequently, uh, but that has to be taken into account. It is part of the risk management of a company, not specifically in the sustainability topic. It is linked with it. Uh, we have recently changed uh, the risk profile for Turkey, for example, after the recent events where human rights were, uh, the abuses of human rights were uh, reported. So it is uh, a fluctuating and changing, ever changing situation. But how can this be um, uh, instantiated on the uh, new administration in the US is something that I honestly don't know. I think that the most important risk for the industry when I look at luxury goods is that uh, the Sino-American relationship may worsen. Uh, if that happens, then uh, this would reflect badly on luxury goods demand. Uh, once again, the Chinese are a, about a third of the luxury market today. Uh, I just, I'm just back from two weeks in China talking to politicians and entrepreneurs there. Uh, they seem to believe that President Trump has more urgent issues elsewhere in Russia, in the Middle East, in Europe, and they want to play ball uh, in terms of having um, a productive relationship with the new leadership. So uh, at least on their part, there's, um, there's a willingness to compromise and to come to terms with uh, the requirements of the new American leadership. The other thing we could see is that uh, uh, import duties and, uh, and uh, trade may become more difficult. And one thing we could see as a retaliation on the part of the Chinese if things went the wrong way 
so that they could use sustainability as they've done, for example, in FMCG in terms of product quality uh, to make it more difficult to bring products to China. Uh, Sarah Fruner, La Voce di New York, uh, newspaper. Um, what question for Federico? Uh, if I remember properly, your last slide actually featured um, um, a datum. Um, you said that um, the interest in sustainability in Italy is strong, and in America, not that strong, to say that euphemistically. Um, how do you think this will impact the relations between the two countries, the two countries, I mean, Italy and the US, and if there are ways that you can think of to increase the interest in the US, uh, let's say, um, perception of sustainability? That's the question. The interest is uh, very much linked with the uh, ability of uh, people working in the different companies to understand properly the topic. Um, as I said, we have seen uh, the highest results in our research in Italy, um, basically because even though the, the tanning sector is mainly made of uh, small and medium enterprises, um, there has been historically a high pressure on the sector. Therefore, the sector has developed internal consciousness on the different topics. Not only that, uh, uh, sustainability has become uh, a competitive factor for companies such as the Italian tanneries. It is not just the only case. We have, in, in this same business, uh, we have done the research for the Italian footwear industry, showing similar results. Textile and clothing is behaving the same way. Um, so there is one way to uh, grow in interest in the supply chain that is increasing culture on sustainability. And this is one of the reasons why we are uh, here today. Mm? It's not because we pretend that we can teach some, something to anybody. No, we're really like we stay where we are. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's because we're bringing and sharing uh, uh, our own experience. This is the first point. Second point is that uh, we have taken this angle of risk management because we think that is one of the triggers that can uh, really stimulate interest. Um, every business is a business, is a profit-making business. When profit is hit, then the interest raises. So we want, uh, also with the examples we have brought, and Professor Solka was right, that was the brand I was referring to, uh, but this is not the only example. There are many others that for several reasons we're not bringing here today. And I can tell you one thing more. This is one of the reasons why Mr. Samposer is moderating here today. Why, why, why is there a financial analyst uh, uh, moderating a debate on sustainability? Huh? The I asked them the same question. When they asked me <laughs> to do. No, 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 but, but um, I, just to give you an example, I will be having uh, next Thursday a meeting with the Italian Banking Association, who is really interested in this topic. This year, the United Nations Environmental Program has published for the first time a report showing the, uh, the role of the financial business in developing sustainability. So bankers are also taking into consideration uh, sustainability-related risks in order to define, or starting to, in order to define uh, furthermore, the risk of uh, the money they're, low, they're, they, they, they're borrowing. So I hope I've answered your question. If, if I can just add on to this a little bit. I mean, one of the things that there, there were rules about lead in like children's footwear that changed in California that became a rule that became a national rule and a lot of the rules regarding production of footwear and some apparel I would assume starts in California because they have some of the strictest rules around. The other thing though is that we're talking a lot about luxury goods here and um, there, some of you are from some luxury goods companies, others are from uh, all different levels of companies and you all have brands that are important. But at the end of the day the consumer wants a good value so I would ask um, you know, what is it, you know, if you're a, 
you know, instead of making a $300 pair of shoes, you're wear, ma making a $90 pair of shoes. How much does it cost to do it in a sustainable manner, or at least to eliminate some of the costs involved so it doesn't sound so ominous to people that, you know, need to sell more moderate goods versus luxury goods? Thanks for the assist. You're welcome. Um, Sustainable leather does not cost more than unsustainable leather. Price of leather is determined by quality, origin of raw material, place where uh, uh, and level of salaries of the of the workers. So we are seeing that in instead companies embracing uh, real policies on sustainability are making a lot of efficiency. So. Uh, it, Again, and we have been discussing this, uh, Sam, uh, would, you be, would you as a customer be prepared to pay more for a square meter of sustainable leather? Probably not. But same quality, sustainable and unsustainable, have the same price because the price is still determined by other factors. Uh, on the other hand, you should ask yourself, uh, in, in either case, whether your consumer is very sensitive to the topic, or is based in Sweden, or is uh, wherever else in, uh, in, uh, in the world, the thing that the product is unsustainable is still very important. It's not asking positively for requirements, but brands should ask themselves, what would be the reaction of my consumers if I am found guilty of non-sustainable practices? So it's a, diff a kind of different angle. They are goods or material or whatever that they call it underutilized. Is such a thing? I know in textile it can be because he explained to me a lot and I had to read this huge uh, book about it. And, but in leather, is it such a thing as underutilized? Basically that they have some sort of, um, maybe the color is not right or maybe, I don't know, the leather, the leather is a certain way, maybe a little defective that could maybe a designer utilize it in a different way than maybe what some well, I, I mean, I can, um, from my old experience, I mean, if you've ever been to a shoe factory where they make them, they're stamping out the different, you know all about this, they're stamping out the shoes. Now, they do that in a way that minimizes waste, but then they're using that leather for trim, or I mean, if they make watches, they'll a watch strap possibly. I mean, they're using, they're, they do it to, eliminate waste. Now that's different than sustainable. It's the sustainability is about how the tanneries do it. And I, I wore these shoes today in honor of being totally against the whole thing. Uh, these are Shell Cordovan shoes. I mean, they just put junk up in the air, but they don't waste a lot of this leather. They use every single piece okay, so of it. Leather would not, that would not be the case that there are not so many underutilized. No, I mean, I mean, you know, certain companies probably that are less efficient don't want to waste leather, but uh, I mean, they, they waste leather, but the efficient, good companies do that, but I don't think that's a matter of sustainability necessarily. Thanks. Thank you. This question is for whoever would like to answer it. Um, I'm Robert Klein, and I'm a director of product for a women's sandal company. I've been doing footwear for about 16 years, and consumer products for about almost 30 years. And the first customer, of my perception, is us. We're the buyers. I have to make decisions every day as to where we're going to spend the money and who I will recommend, whether it's a Turkish tannery or an Italian, Portuguese, you know, Brazilian, Spanish, Chinese, and so on. So <clears throat> from a very practical perspective, I, I, I don't know anybody in the business who says they're not interested. And self-declaration of interest is wonderful, but really, aside from the intensive process of auditing, which I'm certainly not an expert on, and I wouldn't even attempt to go that road, what practical tools are available, aside from, let's say, leather working group that has certifications for silver or gold or platinum, what other types of practical either questions or tools are there for somebody like myself, the first consumer before the second consumer can actually buy it in the store or on, on the web, to kind of funnel the choices in the right directions for sustainability? I think you have mentioned one. There has been, uh, in, the, in the past, the development of the leather working group as their response to brands needs to understand something more on leather. Uh, what Giacomo has presented is a completely different approach. Um, we have called it supply chain trust. 
uh, we are calling we are talking about the fact that at present through a set of certifications that are available and which you will receive with the with the, the, the informative brochure about this um, uh, this event you are practically safe on a sustainability point of view um, Negotiations, terms, prices, and quality of leather is another thing. But uh, uh, yeah, instead of reinventing the wheel, instead of inventing the 466th standard, we have decided to rely on the existing, internationally recognized, accredited, and double verified in order to be, to be sure. Mm? Um, there might be also the development of a risk management tool similar to what we have done in the textile and clothing industry, which would be very helpful also for you to orientate your decisions. And so, Federico, I'm going to cut you off because I've been, we, they, we've been all given the hook because the food's getting cold. So we can continue the conversations and questions over there. And uh, thank you guys all very, very much for coming. And.